Hi guys. Hi guys, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. As you'll see there, the US there, there had a late rally in the back of uh, Bursar Hackaway's um, uh, better than expected earnings, uh, up 41%, so Warren Buffett's company, um, really helping to push the S&P 500 up and thus the Dow ever so slightly as well. Um, though we failed to break above 16,598, uh, and we're kind of just kind of floating, standing still right now, just below that potential resistance, and that level will be strategic in the short term. So looking at the UK 100 as well, uh, we're still bouncing around 6,700, which is the low of the uh, 25th of June right here. Again, volatile session, could only eke out a small gain yesterday uh, once all the dust had settled. Um, this looks to be a potential resistance in play today. Um, looking at Japan 225, um, it's actually broken down a little bit lower, below potential support at 15,488, uh, trading below the 21 period SMA. That's kind of bad news for the Japan 225. From a technical level, this looks kind of a bit ugly. Um, obviously, you still got the 55 period SMA right there, but the next potential support would be at 49.77. Should that sell off there continue? Looking at dollar yen, uh, it's not really moving as much. I thought it would have moved a bit further in the back of that Japan 225 move, but disappointing data out of China and their service sector, one of the lowest they've ever had since they started taking uh, records in 2005, really impacted the, the Asian markets, and that's why Japan 225 is also slipping so much. But dollar yen still trying to hold on about this level to decide which direction it's going to go next. 102 spot 90 is still a potential resistance. Any retracement back down might bring you to the 21 and 55, 55 period SMA right here. Following on from that, you've got 101 spot 35 as the next pen, potential support level. So moving on to Cordell West Texas, it's tried to have a retracement back up to $99. It's obviously on the right side of that right now. Um, it depends if this is going to just float right here and then move back down to 97 spot 64, or if we're going to get a resurge back up to 100 spot 60. Uh, crude oil inventories are due tomorrow. There has been a bit of a supply glut. Um, this level looks like it could be kind of interesting in the short term. So around about $99 uh, is the next potential resistance slash support. Um, looking at gold, um, gold is uh, again trading that tight range. Could be another start of a wedge formation right here. Uh, if I just go ahead and get my drawing tools on here, uh, very much could be. Um, this is, as a matter of fact, I'm probably pretty sure that's what, what it is. So we'll break out either the top end or we'll, it will break down to the bottom. It will be in a narrower range if this uh, is going to remain true. And uh, you can see that 1295 remains to be potential resistance in the short term. Um, so that's uh, another very strategic level to look at. So moving on to your dollar, we did have a, a spike there on the Friday and a slow drift back down again as the euro begins to lose steam in the back of sanctions, uh, potential sanctions on Russia unpack Germany and obviously you had the um, the kind of banking bailout over in Portugal yesterday as well but that should put a cap on further losses uh, the euro is uh, slowly drifting down against the US dollar and uh, if we move on to GBP USD uh, I had a bounce off one spot 6820 especially after such a terrible last uh, you know 20 odd sessions uh, this does look like it could be a bit of a dead cat bounce uh, and today already we we'll begin to move back into negative territory for the session. Uh, so I think that one spot 68.20 will be the potential support uh, if we do begin to drift back down again. Following that will be one spot 67.44. Technical indicators are, however, overbought, oversold, sorry. And uh, but yet the signals to to buy have not yet been given. So you can see the slow stochastic right there is still oversold, but it's not crossing over the um, the 20% line. Uh, and the MACD just crossed the zero line. RSI still has some room for maneuver. So from a technical perspective, uh, there's still a lot more that can happen with cable depending on the economic data. So talking about economic data, today is in fact the fifth. Uh, so we've got a Eurozone PMI, UK PMI, and US uh, ISM numbers, um, which could be an interesting driver for, uh, for additional momentum in the market, especially on equities and the US dollar. And if we fast forward on to uh, the sixth, you've got industrial production, for the UK, uh, you've got um, trade balance deficit for the US, and you've got the crude oil inventories at 3.30 UK time. Keep your eye on the chart forum as ever for more updates from our global analyst team and other CMG Markets clients, and make sure you make insights part of your layout. Join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.